So if there's ever a greater week for a coach than to have his former players come back and former students come back, um, you know, Luana was there. She was, I think, a proud president. Uh, it was amazing. I wish you guys would have been there. I mean, it's just amazing how many came back. And they got this place rocking today. So we're more than two. Like we're a, bro it's a whole nother brotherhood, you know, so we, we look at one another as brothers. You know? I mean, there's no better way to describe it. I mean, these are the guys that you go through the war with, the grind with. Um, you know, these are the guys that you're going to win with. You know, we're all one big group, you know. You know, there's not like, you know, the freshmen down here. And, you know, we try to treat everybody the same. And, um, you know, we're, you know, we all get along very well. And, you know, there's no really, like, you know, set leader. I mean, there are leaders, but it's not like, you know, you do what they say because they're seniors and they've been here and they know how it works. You know, we're all just kind of in this together. You get along well when you're all working towards one goal. And, um, we're all trying to do well in this sport and also trying to have success as a team. And so um, that, that makes bonding easier. I care very much about my family and these guys are my family as well. I mean, I don't think there's anything that one of us wouldn't do for each other um, if something were to happen. Um, and that's the great thing about this team is that we know that in the back of our minds that each other, everybody has each other's back. You know, we are around each other all the time, sun up, sun down, but you know, we're always having fun. You know, I'm pretty sure everybody has their, has their ups and downs, but you know, all in all, we, we always have a great time around one another. Oh, it's fun, you know, as, you know, especially when it's off the court, and you know, we, you know, we joke all the time and it's silly all the time, and then, um, and then we can switch over when it's time to play. We, I think it helps that we have a lot of similar interests as, uh, as far as, I mean, we all love basketball. Um, we like chilling, playing video games, having a good time, things like that. Um, and uh, we, we, I don't know, we can just chill. I don't know what it is. No, there, there isn't one singular thing I think that, that happened that made us uh, get along so well. I think it's just, you know, uh, luck of the draw maybe. You just got all the personalities just mesh and um, guys have respect for one another and, you know, there's nothing, uh, there's, there's no ego trips on the team and, you know, there's not anybody who's, just, who's selfish and... You know, we just, you know, got a few different uh, guys, you know, that's more, that's more silly, you know, more, they joke more off the court, so I think, um, I think that's the main thing. We, we like eating a lot together, I mean, we, we, we do that. Um, video games. Uh, we like to go to the movies a lot. Um, I think that's one of the most popular things. Sometimes we just watch TV. We, all, we just chill. We try to spend as much time as we can with each other. You know, when, when the guy's down, it's easier for us to pick him up. And, you know, and when somebody says something to another guy, he doesn't always take it personal, but uh, he takes that as a challenge and that helps the team. I've not been playing well at all all year, and these guys continue to pick me up and practice and in the games. And, Anytime I have a little flash of success, they're, they're pumped up for me, just as they would be for anybody else who's struggling or anybody else who continues to play well. You know, you want to keep supporting them. As we, as we like to say, you know, um, everybody eats. One is some teams are going to make or break themselves at this time of year. Some guys are going to focus in more and some guys are going to focus in less. Some guys are going to hope for Christmas and a break and some guys are going to say, hey, we get a break because we've got no school, I'm going to take advantage of that break. It's going to be a big week for them. they got a new, uh, a new arena. Their team's doing real good this year, so I think it should be a big game. But let's get total Team helping each other out defense. Everybody helps each other out. And if we don't give up any of those turnovers for touchdowns, we're gonna hold this team down. With the with them being at home, you know, it made it better on them and we just came out and they fought and we fought. They had a nice fan section that was loud and you know, pretty good arena and it was just tough for me. I mean, we knew they were going to come with a lot of energy. I mean, a couple of guys on the scouting point normally you know, on his sides came on hitting sides, and, I mean, and they had a lot of energy. But, I mean, we were able to weather it as the game went on. And the tip is controlled as usual by Michigan State. 
I mean, we, I think we were just extra focused when we went down there. It was a dogfight from the get-go. I mean, we knew we were coming into a tough environment. Coach is emphasizing on he just wants us to score more and, you know, finish those little hooks. And, you know, we was able to get the ball down there and get it out and, you know, get some deep post touches down there to make plays. We're still a work in progress. I might be saying that for another month. I don't know. I just want to, you know, make a play, you know, before before going to the half, you know, to rally our team a little bit. And I think I think it kind of did. We just had to, you know, buckle down. You know, um, when the game is tight like that, you know, it's you either you know sink or swim. And um, I think, you know, we just had to just just lock down and play some defense. When I came in there, I wanted to do my job, play solid defense, and if a scoring opportunity was there, I was going to take it. You know, they start playing good, so, you know, when I got the steal or, you know, when Keith got a steal, you know, it kind of, you know, brought our fans and, you know, our attention to us. So. You know, I'm happy with the win here. It's not an easy place to win at, and we did a pretty good job if you really looked at guarding their stuff, but we got a lot of work to do. Hopefully, we can start doing it now. Uh, the idea for the Izzo alumni game uh, came four years ago. We were sitting in, a, uh, sitting in a meeting with our friends in the athletic department. We were trying to figure out how we could bring the energy back to Breslin while the students, while the Izzo uh, is away on Christmas break. So we said, let's invite former Izzo members back. You know, give them their one more chance to be back in the section they loved while they were here. They really do keep us connected with the people that helped us build it. You know, it was our crowds that really helped us win 53 straight home games. And a lot of those people that come back were a big part of that. What we want to do is be able to connect with any Spartan anywhere. And this is a chance for the Izzo to come back and bring energy and excitement. Uh, last year, actually, the uh, alumni Izzo set a new standard for, uh, for our own current Izzo and, and getting them fired up for the rest of the game. So it's just wonderful. It started off as something that uh, was a couple hundred people and, and there was certainly interest in, but uh, we weren't really sure how it was going to take off. And, and now it's, it's at a point where, it's, where the entire lower bowl and, and what, we, what we use for the students during, uh, during the regular season is, uh, is all going to be filled with uh, alumni for the, for the Texas game here. It's great for us. I mean, just today I met, uh, met up with a couple people I hadn't seen since I was back on campus. And it's just nice that with the students gone, we can supply the enthusiasm and, and get back on campus to do it once a year. I think the young guys can always learn something from the veterans. Uh, but for me personally, um, that's kind of something that my stamp has been on. And uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate those people coming back. The letters I get uh, after they're here um, are incredible. The, enthusiasm during the games, the uh, appreciation. Um, it's really great about college athletics and it's even greater about Michigan State University. I just, I think it's nice that he created the zone because I, I was never interested in basketball before that. You know, and now I keep track of it and want to know what's happening. And I love being a Spartan. I love coming back to East Lansing. It's nice to get away from the home and the kids and come back to your old stomping ground and go out around here and see his own, watch the players, and just to be back. Well, it's been a while since I was since I was a student here, and it's just great to be back and, and see Coach Izzo and this next generation of uh, Spartan basketball players, and, and I feel real fortunate I'm able to bring my son back here, the next generation of Spartan, to come back and, and take this all in, too. When I walk into this building and back into the Breslin Center, I get chills, and I, it just is so important. I just met a friend over here who is um, and back from 1988, how cool is that? I mean, and I was from the 2000 era, so I just, I don't know, I think it's really cool that um, we're back and that we can be a family again, even though we're not in college right now, we can bond back together and it's like the Izzone is the one thing we all have in common, and I think it's really cool. We have had some, um, some people come and call saying, hey, you don't have my contact info, but I was in Judd's jungle and we went back and verified that they were students and not going to argue with them if they're bringing Judd t-shirts back. 
I couldn't do it 20 games a year, but it's nice to get back up here once a year and try to do it. Well, it's it's uh, it's a special tradition here, and this is our second time being at um, at the Izone uh, reunion game, and um, just to see the energy, and just in this in this room, and and, and throughout uh, Breslin today is going to be amazing. Coach Izzo gives the past credit for so many wins of the Izzo. He, he checks it off game by game on which games a difference was made. And as the years go forward, we need to make sure that we continue to place those check marks. The check marks become higher, and you're helping us, helping you, win championships, go to the Final Four, achieve greatness. The Izzone, it just says that we are the sixth man on the court. We are there to encourage the team and to cheer them on. And even when I was in the Izzone, I felt the louder I cheered, the, the better the guys would play on the, you know, on the team. And I just know that um, today, it's so important to be there for our guys. It's going to be a tough game, but I know we can do it. The team needed that tonight, especially with all the students being on break. Uh, but, you know, the old is on the alumni to come in here and uh, really spark the team like that, and, you know, against a, a good Texas team. Uh, it's something that we needed. Play like you practiced, and then we can continue this drill when we get back, go from a good team to a great team. That's right. Let's go. disrespect to the, the current is on members but I feel like those, those that older crowd just get it going even you know more hyper than a younger crowd and it gets us pumped and it scares other teams. Tom Izzo's been blessed he's had a hell of a week you know had all his players back and now had a lot of his students back and they made a difference so did our fans. You know, we had you know a lot of rebounds and you know we just boxed out and that's the main thing we've been going on in practice. Crazy. Well, as soon as the ball went through, they were out of bounds, inbounding the ball. So we just had to get back and get prepared to play defense yet again. Gary Harris looking to flip it in and does. Oh, what a move by Derek Nix! We had, we had to have somebody step up, and he stepped, he stepped up. It's a fun game to watch because we'd score, and the next thing you know, they're they're going down there just trying to shoot a layup or getting a quick shot up. So that's always big. I mean, a fun game to watch. It was a physical game both ways, and uh, Nix was the only guy that stepped up and did the things that he was supposed to do. He, he you know, he won the game for us, and he won it because, and we went to him. Valentine, Price 35 from Michigan State. In the wing, Harris for three. He got it! I mean, it's just amazing how many came back. Atmosphere tonight, you know, that, that was the best I've seen since I've been here, hands down. It was crazy. They were loud. They were standing up the whole entire time, and it was great. We fed off them, and we played great. I don't know what to tell you. I just seen the lane. I knew I could get to the rim with one dribble, and, and, I, and I made the dunk. I had two, got two quick fouls, and you know I had to sit out most of the first half. So I just tried to, you know, come out second half and have a huge impact on the game. You know, I mean, I feel like every game is a big game, especially in college basketball now. They're definitely better than what their record shows, and that showed tonight where they had us down early and, and they were battling the whole way through. We were able to fight through some of the adversity and come out to win. This is what y'all talking about. This is Spartan basketball. That's what we talking about. The grit, the grind, the glory. It's on your what? <laughs> it's on our back. 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 One more time. It's, it's on our back. Our back. Our back. The fact that we have a head basketball coach doing an hour-long radio show once a week, there's nothing unique about that. That's happening every week across the country. And you go around the Big Ten and they're they're having shows in places that have 30 people. We have a show that has hundreds of people. And in this case, could have hundreds more if our place was bigger. It's packed in there. I mean, it's been packed most nights, but it's double packed. It's stacked too deep in there. Fire marshal's not allowed in. But, uh, and it's fun because the players get to inter interact with the fans. And uh, me, me and Nick thought we start off the night with a little, uh, little Jingle Bells duet. 
serious. We're, we're going to sing it for you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I think we look forward to it every year. I know that's one thing Nick said to me before. He, he just came up to me and he said, you know, man, I look forward to this every year. And I think that feeling is mutual with all the guys. And um, last night was really good to, just to see how, the, you know, some very familiar faces, people who are, support us a lot, and some new faces as well. We just got a lot of great support from uh, the city. It's a lot of fun, you know, going to see the, uh, the fans, you know, that, uh, that really support us. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just great going and, you know, seeing some Christian songs. It was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, it gave us a chance to meet some of the fans and also just goof around and sing some uh, Christmas carols. It was a great experience my first time, and I was a little shocked that we had to sing Christmas carols, but uh, it was fun. Singing Christmas carols in front of a bunch of people is not something that you do, you know, do every day. Now, when we started this show with Tom, it was his very, very first year as coach. At the end of the show, that last segment, it's only two, three minutes long. It's kind of a wrap up, see you next week kind of thing. And he says, he said, well, today, I'd like you to make sure I have at least 10 minutes in that last segment. And he's got this big black box. We have no idea what's in this box, right? And I go, okay, Tom, if you want 10 minutes, no big deal. He bends over and he pulls this accordion out. We had no idea what was about to happen. And all of a sudden, he started playing it. Of course, I had no idea he could even play the accordion. People went crazy. And next thing you know, we built in the players singing, and it became a big event. I did, personally didn't know he played any instrument whatsoever. And so when he started playing that, I was like, wow, coach has another talent besides a coaching basketball. Um, I mean, it was cool. He was into it, um, and, and watching him play an instrument was pretty sweet. My accordion playing day started when I was about 12, you know, and I took lessons, 11 maybe, and, and I just got a brand new accordion, and I broke all my knuckles in football. And, uh, and so I quit taking lessons then, and about the only thing I really became pretty good at was playing Christmas songs. It's pretty funny to watch, you know, coach play that accordion. I don't think I would ever learn how to play that, you know, so I kudos to coach for even knowing what he was doing with the whole accordion thing. But uh, no, it was great to see him play that and it was great for us to spend, spend the time with each other. All kidding aside, there is a lot of humor there. And, and, and the players that Tom has always had and the people he calls his family, it's a warm group and they're a funny group there. It's a really personal group of individuals. We thank y'all again for having us out here. Uh, y'all may not believe us, but we definitely look forward to this every year. And, uh, <laughs> Here's a stage where they can just, they can talk and they can have a little fun and maybe even poke a little fun at their coach, which is not something they do all the time, but it's permissible in this setting. You know, I'd like to say that I uh, just, uh, I feel like I reached the mountaintop I was an assistant coach at Michigan State, head basketball coach at Michigan State, an analyst for a Spartan Radio Network, and, and now I've become the holder of Tom Izzo's <laughs> Christmas sheet music. <laughs> and, and there's no real script to it. I mean, we have some songs, we have a framework, but it sort of goes its own little way, which makes it inter entertaining and, and amusing, and it, sometimes you want to see where it's going because you're surprised too. You got a good time, Mizzou story for us? He's also, uh, he's also got practice two days tomorrow, so <laughs> if it's too good, no, that'll I be one sorry guy tomorrow. I couldn't tell you any of those. How about imitating him? Say what? Imitate him. <laughs> no, I'm not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> Who's the best one on the team imitating coach? Who the best imitator? Russell. I do this with the most respect possible for coaches. <laughs> Russ? What are you doing? <laughs> Russ, you're shooting 29 footers. Get to the line. He's right. <laughs> More than likely, you're probably going to get embarrassed in your life, so it's just nice to be able to go out and get out of your comfort zone. It shows, it, it shows our personality, you know, off the court, you know, how silly we can be, you know, and how friendly we can be. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all fun again, you know, when, when it's off the court, you know, with the fans. People were all having a great time, you know, they weren't just there to be there, they were having a really, really good time. And, um, you know, just the support that, that we have as Spartans is uh, pretty um, second to none. You know, Will has done a great job with it. It's just been uh, Gus Ganakis, um, 
I think the people really look forward to it. I think more because they get to see the players and me make an idiot out of myself than it is the music or the singing. What makes it work? Why is it so good? Well, it's real. It's, a, it's somebody that people have come to admire and like up there having a little fun at his own expense. Playing an accordion, I'm guessing at one time he played pretty well, maybe not so good these days because he didn't practice. And you got the players up there, just not a bunch of guys making jump shots or rebounds. They're, they're singing Christmas carols and they're having fun. So it's people with people at a holiday season and it's just fun. To, but to be able to sit next to a guy and talk to him for five, ten minutes and be able to tell him Merry Christmas at the end, uh, it, I mean, it's, it's just an interaction you don't normally get to have. Um, and it was really cool. Well, they pretty much get the opportunity to know, to know us more than just being a basketball player. You know, we, they get to see the way that we interact with one another and how we interact with them, so it was cool. What do you want Santa to bring you? Uh, Big Ten Championship! <laughs> That's a great one right there. <laughs> The good news is I've always got a lot of players or some fans at the show that sing so bad that it drowns out the bad accordion playing.